point that you're releasing this morning. I will thank you because at your right hand there are pleasures. 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 Thank you for the release of your pleasures this morning. We bless you. In Jesus' name, we worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome, church. Can you welcome somebody this morning? Say you good morning. Hallelujah. It's nice to see your lovely and wonderful faces this morning. Amen. I, I'm going to I'm going to try to be brief this morning. Amen. We we've been looking at the subject of uh, financial prosperity. And I want to wrap it up. I want to cut it short. Amen. So that we can do some other things. Amen. We, we spoke uh, on the first day by saying that it is God's intention. It is God's original plan that there should be no poor in the land. Praise the Lord. God's original counsel, desire for his people is that there should be no poor in the land. Amen. And that was amplified by John the Beloved. When he says, God wishes above everything. Everybody say above. Above everything. God wishes above everything that we should prosper. Amen. And we should be in health. So two things is prosperity and health. God does not will for anyone to be sick. His original plan is that we live in health. Now, if you look at um, the church in the wilderness, you will find out that God gave them a code of conduct to keep them healthy. Amen. Don't do this, do this, don't do this, so that they will not be sick. And for 40 years in the wilderness, not one of them fell sick, not one of them lacked. God supernaturally provided and met their needs. In the same way, God also intended that your needs, my needs, our needs will be supernaturally met. That means that our economy should not be tied to the economy of the world. Because we have a God in heaven who is the source of all things. Praise the Lord. Everything flows from him. Everything comes from him. Hallelujah. So we're looking at the fact that God said that there should be no poor in the land. Amen. And then after God's experience with the people, he said to them, if there is a poor man in the land, then you must provide for them, meet their needs. Praise the Lord. And then he went on to say, there will always be poor people in the land. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That God said that out of his experience with human beings. Praise the Lord. Because he discovered that not everyone is going to be faithful. Not everyone is going to be obedient. Some are going to be trying to be smarter than God. Amen. Some are trying to you know, do all kinds of things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that was what we said the first and the second day. Amen. But there's a very important question that we want to try and see if it can help us to answer today. Every time you come to church, you ask yourself that question. Every time we call for an offering, you ask yourself that question. Praise the Lord. That is a question we want to try to address this morning to see if the Lord will enable us to encourage us to be able to answer that question positively. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, I'm going to be reeling out a lot of scriptures, but we might not be reading them because of our time. Amen. I'll just be, for those of us who are writing, you can write them down if you want to. Amen. Amen. And the tip, we're going to have the tip. So if you want, you can also pick up the tip. Hallelujah. Now Luke chapter 6 verse 38. This is probably going to be the only scripture I'm going to read. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down and shaking together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Who will give unto your bosom? men for with the same measure that you met with all 
it shall be measured to you again. Then let me let me appreciate before we come, let me appreciate all who came for uh, let God arise yesterday. Thank you very much. I believe that God has arisen on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. We also want to appreciate the family that fed us. If one family made provision for the uh, the launch that we had yesterday, we pray that God's abundance will rest upon them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So the question we are looking at this morning, amen, is the question of how much do I give? How much do I give as my offering? I'm sure you have answered that, you have asked yourself that question this morning. Praise the Lord. How much do I give as an offering? Now thank God the brother who took who took the who took the uh, offering told us God gave his best. Amen. And probably God expects you also to give your best. Praise the Lord. Now we find out from the scripture, amen, that Jesus Christ, from that passage you read, taught his followers, his disciples, people who were listening to him, to do what? To give, to learn to be givers. Amen. If you look at the bulletin this morning, we're still talking about the subject of giving. Praise the Lord. Also, in, a, in his epistles, Paul commanded Christians to give. In fact, he actually, he actually encouraged them to give systematically. He said to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 to 2, he said for them to lay aside every week for the need of the people. Praise the Lord. He also encouraged them to work so that they might have to give. So that they won't be excused that, well, I don't have a job. You understand? So you know I don't have a job. So they say he encouraged people to work so that they will be able to do what? To give to the need of the people and also to give to the need of the church. He also encouraged them to be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. Amen. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16, he encouraged them to, to do good and to share. So when we're talking about giving here, yeah, don't forget, give and it shall be given unto you. Praise the Lord. Now giving here yeah, is not limited to your offering, your tithes, your vows, and whatever you give in the house of God. It also extends to, 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 to giving to people not only within the church but also outside of the church. Praise the Lord. God expects us to do good, especially to those of the household of faith. So your number one priority for giving is what? Members of the household of faith. Amen. Now, it should, it, it, it should be summer for you to leave your poor brother or your needy sister in the church. Amen. And go give out to somebody out there. Your priority should be to what? To meet the need of the people in the church. In one way or the other. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the question that comes up each time we talk about giving is how much should I give? How much do I give? Amen. Now for the, for the children of Israel, God simplified it for them. And that's what I'm trying to do this month to simplify it for us. Amen. Moses gave them, taught them how to give. Praise the Lord. The law of Moses was very explicit. He gave them commandment about tithing and how to give to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what's a tithe? A tithe, number one, is 10% of your income. Now forget about the argument about whether it is gross or net. Praise the Lord. Although we have this problem about, now should I give my gross? Amen. Now those who, who are for it says, well, you shouldn't give God your remnant. Honor the Lord. So you should give to God before you give to the government. But those who are against you say, well, the government has taken it. And so I only have the net. So I can only give the net. Amen. So it, it, now, whichever way, let God minister to you. Amen. Let God convince you as to whether you want to give your tithe by giving the gross or giving the net. Praise the Lord. And as we mature in the things of God, we will know how to do better. Praise the Lord. So now, we, we, send it, we find the example of Abraham who gave a tithe to Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14. Amen. 
We also saw the example of Jacob who promised to give a tenth to God on his safe return. Whether I gave it to God or not, I didn't know. Oh, I don't know. But he told God, I said, God, I'm going on this journey. Like many of us say, Lord, I'm going, I'm going now. If you can just help me. Amen. I will do this. Praise the Lord. And after God has done it, we forget about God. Praise the Lord. Don't forget that the Bible says we should not be rash with our mouth. Amen. We shouldn't make a vow that we are not prepared or will be unable to fulfill. Praise the Lord. Amen. We also saw Israel who gave a free will offering for the building of the tabernacle. In fact, that, that, when, you, when, you, when you looked at that example in First Chronicles chapter 29, oh no, sorry, in Exodus chapter 35, they had to, the people had to call Moses. I said, Moses, come. Please tell the people not to bring again. We have more than what? We have more than enough to do the work that God has committed into our hands to do. Praise the Lord. We also see the example of David. Amen. Who made provision for the building. Although God said, you are not going to build me a temple because your hand is soiled with blood. Amen. But we discover that it was eventually David who built the temple. All Solomon did was to supervise. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All he did was supervise the building. Because everything that they needed was provided by what? By Moses. Sorry, by David for the building of um, the tabernacle. Hallelujah. So we see the example of Israel's tithing to God. Amen. And I, and I give an example of the tithe as one tenth. Amen. To the, to the Levites. Praise the Lord. The Levites in turn gives a one tenth. Amen. To the tabernacle. Amen. In fact, the tithe is the lowest form of giving in the Bible. Amen. It's the lowest form. The tenth is the minimum that God expects anybody to give. Praise the Lord. Because it's a prerequisite. It's a commandment that God requires of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Now apart from the tithe, we see that God made, made specific provision to meet the need of the people. For example, he says, when you are reaping your field, amen, don't come back again to look for it, to, to reap to glean. You know, when, you, when you reap your farm, amen, and then you want to come back and say, okay, maybe there are some angry. So he said, leave those ones there for the poor and the needy in the land. Praise the Lord. So God cares so much about what? About our giving, not only to meet the work of the gospel, but also to meet the need of the people around us. So we must not close our eyes to the need of the people around us. They don't say, well, the person doesn't go to church. That's not a business. The Bible says, he that giveth what? To the poor does what? He lends unto God. So when you give to people out there, amen, you are actually giving to God. It's like you are saving in God's bank. And the Bible says, God will do what? We, we give it back to you. Amen. Now, if we come to the New Testament, we find a we find very good example of people who gave. Amen. We find a Zacchaeus who gave half of his good to the poor. That's awesome. Amen. You know Zacchaeus, the very tall man. Amen. <laughs> Who had to climb the sycamore tree to see Jesus Christ. Amen. And because of the joy of salvation, he said, Lord, don't forget it was a tax collector. He said, If I have defrauded any man, what will I do? Half of my goods. Praise the Lord. We also see the example of the widow. So we're not talking about big sums of money now. Amen. We saw the widows, the widow had two mites. Amen. And, and Jesus Christ said that was all that she had. Amen. Hallelujah. We saw the example of Barnabas who sold his land and brought the money to church. Amen. It was the example of Adonis and Sapphira also who wanted to give to impress. Amen. Who, was, who, who were killed because of their money. Because they were not faithful. God killed them because of their money. May thank God for grace. Hallelujah. We also see the example of the meticulous tithing of the Pharisees. Amen. The Pharisees, they give, if you give the Pharisee one banana, the guy will cut it into ten. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And bring one ten to church. Jesus Christ said they bring, they bring tithes of what? Of onions and cumins and everything. They were so meticulous about keeping the law. Hallelujah. We also see the examples in Antioch. Now the church in Macedonia, 
the brethren, no, the, the Bible is litter with the example of people who were givers. So the question I want you to ask yourself this morning, am I a giver? Or how is my giving? Praise the Lord. Now, how do I give? How much do I give? Praise the Lord. Thank God for the Apostle Paul who has given us some specific guidelines to help us. And that's what we want to explore this morning. Amen. To help us amen, in giving so that we will not come into condemnation. Praise the Lord. But so that we will give properly. Now, because we, we, we get, I, I get the example of Ananias and Sapphira who, who, who were not under compulsion because they saw Barnabas did it. They also sold their property. Amen. And they brought the money, but they didn't bring all the money. They would have told Peter, say, Peter, we sold the land for, for 1,000 pounds. We are, we are only, we only want to give how much? 500. So, this is the 500. The rest we want to use it. Peter asked him, did you sell the land for this? He said, yes. So, their error was in line to who? To the Holy Ghost. So, don't forget that you are not dealing with the church. You are not dealing with God. Amen. Your gift is a transaction. I think one of our studies we said it's your blood. You remember? You know, it's a trans it's a transaction between you and God. Hallelujah. Amen. So how do we give? Number one, we give as we are prospered or as God prospers us. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 to 10. Paul charges Christians to give as they prosper. Amen. He instructed them to give according to what they have and not what they do not have. Our giving should be in keeping with the level of our prosperity. Praise the Lord. Our giving should be in keeping with the level of our prosperity. Now it says, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do you. Verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him store in store as God has done what has prospered him. That there be no gathering when I call. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're supposed to give as as so now. If for example, I hand a hundred pounds today a month, amen, and I can afford to give five pounds to God. If God promotes me and he gives me and he pays me 150 pounds next year, what should happen to my giving? Shake Chris. That's as God prospers us. Praise the Lord. Now, for example, if I if I work with um, uh, ABC company, praise the Lord, and I earn two pounds a month, and I also and I also sell some things along the side. Or I also have some shift. Because this is where many of us, this is where many of us make many people miss it. Amen. We are confident. Many of us are come. We are confident to just pay our tithe, give our offering on our regular job. Praise the Lord. Now, what happens to the increases? God expects you to give as you are prospered. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I know. I know it's a very hard one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know it's a very very. Hard. But that's just just the truth. So that means, for example, if I work for Maybe the NHS, for example, and I and I earn a thousand pound a month, or I earn eight hundred pound a month, and I, maybe during the course of the month, I'm lucky, uh, I get a job with uh, Tombry, amen. And they send me somewhere to do some shift, and uh, and I get some additional money. God, God also expects me to pay a tithe of that additional income. Praise the Lord. Does that make sense to us? Hallelujah. Because that is, that that is being that is that is giving as you are prospered. Hallelujah. Now, number two. Now, giving should be done willingly. Thank God for the brother who took the offering this morning. To be done willingly. There must be a willing mind prompting our gifting. Now, now don't be coerced. Don't be whined to give. When you do, you aren't going to get any blessing. It should be done willingly. Praise the Lord. In fact, when, when, when we're about to build the tabernacle, Moses said to the people, as many people as God has stirred up their heart. So it's not compulsory. If God has not stirred up your heart, don't bother to do it. But don't do it because Sister Shioma is doing it. 
And where am I going to hide my face? Now, let's, let me just give an example. Now, the family who provided yesterday, we didn't ask them to do it. I didn't even think of what other people are going to eat anything. To be honest, I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind that people will eat. My, my, it was good that they prepared because someone like me, I didn't eat before I came. How many of us didn't eat? Praise the Lord. But uh, the, their heart was stirred up by God. That's, a, that's what I'm talking about. God lays it in their heart. It's okay. We have this special meeting tomorrow. After the service, a lot of people, I thank, thank God for sister. Some, some people came from, is it Gloucester? So some people came from Gloucester. All about the place. Now, after the meeting, it will have, have looked somehow if those people just went away. Or even people from Bristol with nothing to eat. Praise the Lord. So thank God. That's what I'm talking about. So it is willingly done. Nobody coerced them to do it. Amen. It is, it is giving like that that carries the blessings of God. Hallelujah. So there must be a willing mind prompting our gifting. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 12. We cannot give with a grudging heart or by obligation or out of necessity. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if I don't give now. Nah. You know some churches. I, I have a friend. My friend said Every month, if you don't pay your tithe, you will call you say, come on, I have not seen your tithe this month. <laughs> you don't say. Praise the Lord. And for those of how many of you have been to living faith? Now, you know, it's a principle. The first thing the bishop will do when you come is, I don't know if he still does it now. He will call for the tithe record. I'm just saying, you say, if you, if you say, okay, daddy, I have this problem, say, okay, go and see whether you are obedient to God first. Go and call for the tithe. If you don't pay, say, I'm sorry. You cannot be disobeying God and expecting God to do what to help you. It's as serious as that. Praise the Lord. So, it's not something you do out of necessity, but something you do what? Willingly. We must give because we want to, not because we have to. Praise the Lord. We give because we want to, not because we have to. Praise the Lord. When you give because you have to, then there's no blessing attached to it. Amen. It's not being done willingly. It's being done because of some other reason. And don't forget that. Do not be mocked. God cannot be deceived. I can be deceived as a pastor because I don't know everything. I'm human like you. Praise the Lord. I can be deceived. I'll collect the money from you and we'll pray for you. <laughs> I don't know why that God is going to answer that prayer. I think that's what I'm saying now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, also in our giving, Paul in Second in Second Corinthians chapter eight verse seven encourages us to seek to excel in giving. Now, the word abound means to excel in the grace of giving. With God's help, we can abound in every good work. We can excel in every good work. Now, let's let, let's look at this fearful scripture in Matthew chapter five verse twenty. It's a very it's a very powerful scripture. And somebody who has a loud voice can read for us. There's a microphone here. Maybe maybe a man with uh, a baritone voice. Now listen. That's that's each time I read that scripture, I, I'm scared. He says, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God. Now, the Pharisees, they, they, they pay tithes of onions and cumin. In fact, now, now, history says the Pharisees, they give a tithe of about 20 to 30 percent. That's their tithe. The Pharisees, they fast twice a week, every Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They, make, they pray. I don't know how many times they pray. They, amen. But Jesus kind of says, except our own righteousness exceed their own level of righteousness. Now, they may do it to gain men's approval. Amen? Because the Bible says that we should not be like the Pharisees. Amen? Who, because they want to gain men's approval when they are fasting, their face is very bitter. So, everybody who says, ah, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> they, know, they, know, they know you are fasting. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> and then they make, and then for, for pretense also, they make long prayer when they want to pray. Our Father, uh, they begin to use the Tao and the Shad. They don't, they don't pray simple prayer. Praise the Lord. They do all those things, amen, to get the applause of men. 
Amen. But Jesus Christ said, it shall not be so among you. Amen. But it says, our righteousness must exceed. So that means that God expects us to excel, to be better than the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the Lord. Amen. So God expects us to seek to excel. Now, I'm not saying we should be competitive because somebody gave one pound, I'm going to give, I'm going to give two pounds. Like, like they do in Anglican churches, no? You know, they have this bazaar. Amen. And then uh, my, my, and my, 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 my dad said, I, I came first in this year, uh, this thing. How do you know you come first? Yeah, because I gave the best. Amen. And they give them a shield for it. You know, they do it. It's competition. Amen. When they are doing it, my mother said, This year I'm doing harvest, so you must send money. Why do you say no? Because everybody will send money to you. Uh, yeah. It's good. That's their level of understanding. But that's not what I'm talking about. We're not talking about competition. Amen. We are talking about excelling in giving, even to the cause of the gospel. Can I hear somebody say big amen? amen? And also, in our giving, we should aim for equality. Paul did not expect order to be eased at our expense. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13. Praise the Lord. He does not expect other people to be eased at our expense. Rather, that our abundance will supply the lack of other people. Now, let me explain what that means. The Bible is not saying that, well, only two or three of you are forced to carry the burden of the church. Praise the Lord. And then that's to fold your hand. But God expects that the, um, the less blessed, amen, will give as much as they can. And the more blessed will give as much as they can. So that the giving of the one who is less will not be noticeable. Is that, is that English correct? Yeah. And so that, so, that our, so that our giving will complement each other. So if, for example, all I have is 10 pounds and we want to buy the keyboard. Now, for example, let me give an, a very good example. When I wanted to buy the keyboard, somebody gave us a thousand pounds. Because, because the person had the money, blessed, prompted by God, still by, by, to give it. And we needed 2,000 pounds. And some other person gave 10 pounds, some other people gave 500 pounds. Now, we're able to buy because there was what? Complimentary giving. Amen. So we're not saying that, okay, oh, because uh, Pastor Ellen, now you, you can afford to just buy it, so all of us, there's no point for us to do anything. No. Praise the Lord. So in our giving, we should aim for equality. Praise the Lord. So that it will not. Now, I'll give, I'll give another example. I don't know why this, why this come up now. Now, for example, my father-in-law passed on now. Amen. And we are preparing for the funeral. Praise the Lord. And then, when I sat down with my wife, and then we looked into the family. We looked at, we looked at one, two particular people and said, look, this person is not that blessed. Now, let's make up for this person. Let's cover for this person. We don't want this person to be disgraced. We don't want the nakedness of this person to be exposed. So we said, okay. We called and said, look, look don't worry about it. You are under our canopy. We will take responsibility, praise the Lord, for whatever accrues to you. And it was very exciting. It happened to me too. I told you when I came back, when I was going to bury, bury my dad, I left England with about 700 pounds or thereabout. That was all I had on me. I didn't have any money. But I just went in blind faith that God is going to bury, <laughs> bury the old man, praise the Lord. And I got some and they summoned me to a meeting and they said, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I told you so when I came back. My uncles that have never given me one P. They said, okay, we have sat together as our part of the family. We are covered up for you. We are giving you 550000 That's half a million. And the, one of our uncles, I said, oh, how can you give him money without consulting me? I'm adding additional this to it. Praise the Lord. Now, what they simply did was to cover up for me. Praise the Lord. The one who has much gave much. The one who have less, gave less. In the same way also, we should do in the, in the church. Now the widow with two mites gave her two mites. Don't forget, Jesus Christ said, the rich were given. But the widow also came with her two mites. Praise the Lord. So nobody was discontinuous here. Amen. So the, the giving of the rich will probably make up for the little mites that the woman had given. Although the woman gave the best in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we should aim for equality. When we give, hallelujah. Giving should be in the direction of the greater to the lesser, both as individual and also as a church. Praise the Lord. Then what number are we? If we are writing a number, number four or so. 
Number four. Now, we should sow bountifully. We have, no, we have belabored that two weeks ago. We should sow what? Bountifully. If we sow bountifully, we will reap also bountifully. Not for personal gain, but to abound for even more good works. Praise the Lord. Seek to give bountifully so that you might even give more. Next time. Don't forget, as God prospers you. Hallelujah. Then also, we should give purposefully. Praise the Lord. We should give with a purpose in mind. Each one is to give as they purpose in their heart. That is, with careful planning and intention. Not as an afterthought. Budget beforehand to give purposefully and willingly. Now, what I do is this. God forbid the day I won't have an offering. Now, what I do, do is this. When I, when I, any money I get, I get my salary, uh, salary at the end of the month. If you see some of my old notes, I put tight this amount. Offering for four weeks, I remove it there. If it's 10, 10 pounds, I remove it there. Offering for midweek, I put it there. So, I won't come to church without an excuse that the money is spent. I've already removed all my offering for the month. Put it aside. So when I come to church, I have that. Now, I may be blessed during the course of the week and I may give more than I've proposed, but that my minimum budget I've already put down will be met. So I won't come to church without having an offering in my hands. Praise the Lord. It might not be much, but I always have to give because I've, I've planned it to give. So we are encouraged to also plan in our giving. Praise the Lord. Make a budget. If you're, if you're going to give five pounds every Sunday, put it down. So when you call, you know you have five pounds. Now when God stands up and you have to give 20 pounds, you give 20 pounds. Does it make sense to somebody? Yes. Praise the Lord. Now when God blesses you, you say, oh God has blessed me today. Oh God, what can I just, let me just give you 1,000 pounds. Praise the Lord. But there's a minimum that you are not going to go under. And I know of people who every year they increase the level of their giving. God says this year, last year I'll be giving 10, 10 pounds. No, God, I want to increase it to 15 pounds this year. People do it. Praise the Lord. They do it. I know of somebody, I know of, I know, um, I'm not feeling about the man called Bill Wisting. Amen. Bill Wisting started by giving 10%, now he gives 90% as his tithe. We are people like that. The late Archbishop started by giving, Archbishop Bessie Dowster started giving by. 10, 10, uh, uh, 10%, 20%, and then it went up to 90%. Yeah, I know you are not Archbishop. You are not Bill Wilson. Some of us cannot survive giving 90%. But what we are saying is that as God prospers us, praise the Lord, we also should do what? Which will increase our level of giving. Now, you want God to bless you more, don't you? Now, give him more. Bless him more. Praise the Lord. In fact, he gave us his best. So what is your best that you are giving to him? Praise the Lord. Now, at a particular time in your life, your best could be your service. Your best could be your service. For, for example, for some of us who are students, now, I don't expect you to go and get your school fees to go and <laughs> to, to, to make that an offering. Your best could be a service. Your best could be whatever comes, your, you know, your, your free gifts that you have, your pocket money, your money for allowance, praise the Lord, that you give to the church. That you give to God. Hallelujah. I so said we should give purposefully. And then also we should give with cheerfulness. We've had that this morning again. We should give what? With cheerfulness. God, the first thing I knew about giving is that in our church, we want to do harvest. You know what's called harvest? We will print the envelope. God loves a cheerful giver. And we distribute the, the, what's it called? The envelope around the old town. At, at the end of the day, they, they put one, one cover inside. <laughs> they put one, one P, one, one P inside. And that God's, God loves it. That's the first, the first thing I know about giving is that God loves what? A cheerful giver. Let's give joyfully. Let's give cheerfully. Amen. Let's give God. Whatever you are giving, rejoice. That's your level. Somebody said life is in faces and men are in what? They are in sizes. Leave your face and your size part time. Don't live bigger than your income. Praise the Lord. Don't try. I told you my own story. Don't try to impress anybody. It's not going to help you. 
Praise the Lord. But be honest in your giving. Don't forget that you are, you are dealing with God. He sees your heart. He knows whether you have the money or you don't have it. That's the funny thing. I, I don't know how much you have in your account. Amen. If you call for offering, whether you give or you don't give. But God knows. God may prompt your heart. Amen. Somebody, somebody sent me a text. Said, God has said, well, the 20, 20 pound you, you are giving a week is okay. Has done his job. Amen. And someone in the church said, the 20, 20 pound you give as an offering has done his job. Now you are free to give anything you want to give. God speaks to God. God speaks to us. God just speaks to people. Praise the Lord. Okay. My little girl, if I mean one, she says, Daddy, I want my offering. 20 piece, I don't want 20 piece. <laughs> so I don't want 20, 20 piece, too small. You see, you know I mean? No, I don't want 20 piece, too small. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. She gave with cheerfulness. Hallelujah. And so, um, now, in giving, many suggest at least a ten percent, which is the which is the minimum. Amen. This is often suggested as a bare minimum. Amen. Yet even the Pharisees they give twenty to thirty percent to the Lord and to the poor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, as we round up this morning, um, we I want to suggest that for every one of us, we try to budget. Everybody say budget. Now, we all do budgeting. Amen. We all do budgeting. But let's also learn to do budgeting on our giving. Let's have a minimum that you give. Praise the Lord. Make a budget. You know, many times, many times when we are coming to, sorry, it's when we are looking for offering. You know, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Because, for example, if you take, if you take, if you take bus to work, you ride a bus, every Monday you do what? You look for me to buy your boss pass because without that one you don't get a job. There are some things we budget for. Amen. There are necessities. In the same way also, we should budget on our giving. Praise the Lord. So that when they call for offering, you won't feel somehow. Amen. You won't be scratching your head. Praise the Lord. And some, that some of the money we even squander on things that does not really matter. Amen. Everyday sales. Praise God. That's, that's an example of how we squander money. Yeah. Now, the fact that the, the fact is that it's buy one, get one free does not mean. Now, you buy one, get one free. The second one is useless. It's just a gimmick to just clear their stores. Buy one, get one free. Get, buy one, get second one, half price. You buy one, get one free. Get buy one, half price. Now, your wardrobe is full of clothes. Your house is full of grocery. Nothing after your expiry date. My children won't touch it. It's, it's when I get to England, I know that some things expire. There's no expiry date on any food in Africa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. They said this egg has expired. It doesn't have any expiry date. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, so we just chunk this thing out. Now, don't, 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 that's, don't forget, that's wasted money. To be honest, it's completely wasted. I tell people if you have any clothes in your wardrobe that you don't wear for three months, you don't need it. That's, that's the frank truth. You don't need it. So clothes are there for one year, like that. They said, they're just greeting there every morning. God bless you. This man. Okay, when, when, uh, okay, when they are doing something, you are thinking of, you are, oh no. God, God help us in Jesus' name. I tell people that, you see, I tell people, I said, if the, I, I try and round up, I said, if the apostles had lived like we live today, the gospel will never get to us. We will never see the gospel. Imagine somebody went to Oxford and graduated and said he wants, he wants to go on the missionary field. There's no, he only has a support from CMS. They're sending him probably 50 pounds a month. He doesn't know what he's going to be there. He lives a bright career. Yeah, and he goes over there, everything. So that you can get the gospel. Praise the Lord. Now, if they build houses like all of us are building houses, the gospel won't come to us. You want to build a house in Chicago, build one in Nigeria, and, and they tell you, your mother calls and says, hey, uh, Anthony has finished roofing his house in the village. <laughs> are you... I have a land reserve for you. Come and build. <laughs> the houses, you don't even know whether you are going to stay there. No, I'm not saying you shouldn't build in the village. Don't get me wrong. Praise the Lord. I, mean, I told them, I told them, don't, I'm not building any house in the village. I'm not going to come to this village to live. So don't, don't forget, forget about building a house. Who am I going to build the house for? And for people who will be, after you build the house, they'll be, they'll be pursuing you to kill you so that they can inherit your house. 
How much you putting yourself in trouble? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, we must give as we are proposed in our heart. That's number one, as you are proposed. Amen. But if God, if God touches your heart, you want to give time, and God says, okay, oh, the worship this one was just beautiful. God, what can I give to honor you? God says, increase your offering. And then you give. Otherwise, you already have your five pound in your pocket. Put it in the offering bucket. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, God expects us to give as we prosper. Plan your budget according to your level of prosperity. So if you are if you if you are giving, if you have 10 pounds, you give one pound. When you have 20 pounds, don't give one pound. Increase it. Praise the Lord. So include a special place in your budget for your plan giving. Budget not just what you want to give to the church, but to others as well. Amen. There was a time uh, my wife was, and I said, I said, look, this old people at home. I will go to be every day. Okay, all right. You are at home. So I told my younger brother in America, now this month you send money home. Next month I will send money home. And we budget it. Amen. We plan. For example, if I want to give somebody something, I plan okay, next month I'm going to bless brother so so so. Amen. So when I get my salary, I put it in my budget. So budget give. Don't forget, give a year. We're not talking about just tight and offering alone. Amen. We are supposed to meet the need of our brethren. Praise the Lord. Let's look around the church. Look at people around. And so, thank God for one of our sisters here. Every Christmas, amen, shoes, bags, clothes, all kind of things. Thank God for my wife. I mean, I don't know how to give. But she's a wonderful giver. She taught me how to give. She can give, she can give anything. She can give anything. Even if we don't have her too. She was one that said, uh, he said, uh, you said it's too small, it means you are stingy. I said, can I give this person? He said, give. That's what you have. That's your level. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, so we're talking about giving to the people. Let's learn to, for some of us, if I ask some of us, say, oh, I'm members of this church for one, two years, you have never blessed another church member with something. That's not good enough. It could be just anything. It could be anything. Just sow a seed. Scatter. And you have it abundance. Praise the Lord. Just look for somebody and say, you, you may think they have, yes. But you are sowing a seed because you want to reap and harvest. Hallelujah. For example, you can say, okay, my giving to the church is uh, 8%. My giving to other charitable giving, maybe for example, you want to support, um, um, I was asking our sister, about people in Africa, you want to be, when, when they have a tsunami, when they have a Ebola, you want to say, okay, let's give. Why don't you just give something to support these people? It may, be, it just, it, it may not be much. Amen. But that leads you. you know, sometimes, when I, sometimes when I watch the TV, except that people, this, except that people, this, some of these charities, they just squander money. So give two pounds. Two pounds a month. Amen. It's enough to dig well in some places in Africa. What's two pounds? Two pounds is not sufficient to do what? To buy ice cream for your little boy or girl. But if you give that two pounds to a charity, if they don't squander it, because out of the money they will, they will have their own office here first. <laughs> they, will, they, will, they, will first all, they will first of all live comfortably here first. Then they send the remnant to Africa. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But if you have a good, char if a good charity, two pounds can dig a well of water in some place in Africa. Can give some, can give some people decent meat for a week. You can do something like that. Just two pounds. What's two pounds? Nothing to you. Praise the Lord. So, cheerful giving is easy when we have already set aside what we plan to give. You do it with the excitement because you have it in your pocket. It's okay. It's time for tithe and offering. You already have your tithe and offering. You don't need to scratch your head. But if you don't have it now, you'll be looking. Praise the Lord. Also, or you will stick style, go to the toilet. <laughs> yeah, yes. You understand what I mean? It's because you don't have it, because you didn't plan it. If you had planned it, the money would be there in your pocket. Nobody bought a tax without having his money in his pocket. Praise the Lord. So when you come to church, put your money in your pocket to give to God. The Lord will prosper you. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Certainly, when we sow bountifully, we will reap bountifully. 
God is willing to multiply the seed that we have sown and increase the fruits of our righteousness so that we may have an abundance for every good work. As your income increases, why not increase the percentage of your giving and also giving on additional income? God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we just bow down as we talk to God this morning? I know giving is always a hard subject in any church, anywhere. Amen. But God will bless us. Let's ask him that he will bless us so that we can bless the gospel. Let's ask him that he will give to us that we can give to the cause of the needy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ask that God will bless the work of your hands. Ask that God will provide for you that you have, that you will not lack, that it shall be well with you all the days of your life. In the name, God said to Abraham, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. Why not connect yourself to that covenant blessing? Lord, bless me. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing to this principle. Make me a blessing to my family. Make me a blessing to my community. Make me a blessing to my brother. Ask for God's grace. Just ask him. Just ask him. Lord, we open up our heart to you for the reign of your blessing. Lord, we lift up ourselves to you, God. We ask that you help us not to be covetous because tithing and giving is a proof that we have conquered greed. Let help us, Lord, to overcome greed and selfishness. But the Lord will become pillars in your kingdom. We become instruments in your hand, O oh God, to bless the people around us. That our brethren will not lack and will be wallowing in abundance. But the Lord, out of the abundance you have given to us, Lord, we will reach out to them in mercy, in goodness, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, King of Glory. We bless and we appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And let somebody say a big amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for listening.